This is it. I think I'd rather be fishing. Go get him. May it please the court, Mr. Chief Justice. Currently, there are 3,300 people on death row in this country. My client is one of only two commit murder. You here to give us a box score? I'd like to provide a context, Your Honor. In Louisiana, 180 men have been prosecuted for child rape since this law went into effect in 1995. Leonard Serra is the only one facing death. Look, counsel, Louisiana law permits death for child rape. And I would respectfully submit that law is unconstitutional. Based on what? Based on this court's finding in Coker that the death penalty- it spoke to the rape of an adult, not a child. Maybe you need to read it again. And even if I were to concede your point, which I don't, there's a national consensus now in favor of authorizing the death penalty for non-homicide rape. Why? Because Louisiana passed a barbaric law joining the ranks of Saudi Arabia, Uganda, China... And other states in this country... Five. Who... Five states. That's hardly a consensus. And none of those other states authorize death for first-time offenders, as Louisiana does. And it should also be noted in your reliance on a national consensus, you look to trends in legislation. Laws passed by politicians, mostly around election time when they're desperate to appear tough on crime. The people who care the most about the welfare of children, uh, doctors and social workers, the people who actually treat abused kids, have filed amicus briefs asking you to strike down this law because they know the death penalty, in fact, does not protect kids at all, but rather it makes it less likely that children, even if they've been abused, will report the crime, especially if a family member is involved. No kid wants to be responsible for a relative being executed. And children often get it wrong. They are uniquely prone to suggestibility and coercion. Not that the police would ever be guilty of that, of course, but we already have an epidemic of wrongful convictions in this country, as many as 15,000 a year, too many of them ending up on death row. And child rape prosecutions are especially unreliable. And now we want to add the death penalty to make these mistakes irrevocable? Whatever one's feelings are on capital punishment, and I realize with this court one seems to be for it, you simply cannot ignore the fact that we often screw it up. We convict the innocent, we botch executions, which is why many states have declared a moratorium on capital punishment. That's your true national consensus. And yet, here comes Louisiana seeking to expand the death penalty to non-homicide cases. And this is my favorite part, to kill the mentally disabled. Are we serious? This defendant was never officially pronounced disabled. But he is just the same, Your Honor. He has an IQ of 70. They're gonna kill him because there was no official pronouncement? The way this goes, counsel, is we work off a record which you are not free to amend. But by record, you simply mean the conviction. A reading of the entire record shows that he denies his guilt and always has. He has no prior arrest, that the victim never even made the accusation until a full 20 months after the alleged crime. There was no DNA. But actual innocence is not something you get to argue. Well, how silly is that? You're deciding whether or not to kill someone and his possible innocence is irrelevant? Mr. Shore, I don't like your demeanor, your tone, and I would remind you of where you are. I know exactly where I am, Mr. Chief Justice. I'm in the Supreme Court of the United States. And let me tell you, you folks aren't as hot as all get out. Dear God. Let's consider your respective Senate confirmations. You all testified under oath that you never actually considered how you would rule on abortion. You must be kidding me. Never gave it a thought. No perjury there? Justice Scalia, you went duck hunting with Vice President Cheney while he was a named defendant in a case before this court. Congratulations on not getting shot, by the way. But you didn't exactly avoid the appearance of impropriety there. Justice Alito, you were caught hearing a case involving a company you'd invested hundreds of thousands of dollars in. Huh, no conflict of interest there? You also don't recuse yourself in terrorism cases, even though your best friend is Michael Chertoff, head of Homeland Security. Seems to me the Supreme Court of the United States should be made of sterner stuff. Am I right? Justice Thomas, at least put down the magazine. Hey. I really don't think...